So on a typical eyelid rig, you would have joints that are aiming from the center of the eye out to a point on a curve, just like this. And then when you deform that curve, the point that the joint is aiming at gets pulled up and it aims at it. And that gets you a pretty nice deformation of the eyelid because you'd have a joint per span going out to this curve. The issue with that is if we look at this from the front view, when I move this curve up, the point on the curve moves directly up in the y-axis, but this joint that we would have bound to the mesh actually rotates up and then in slightly towards the pole of the sphere. And that can cause some uh, issues with your look development because typically you would want the, all these spans of your eyelid to go directly up vertically. And it would be nice if we could get this joint tip to travel straight up instead of up and then also in. So I'm going to show you a lightweight way that we can correct that problem. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole little proxy eye setup and I'm going to move it up and out in somewhere else in world space so that I can show how to handle this problem when you're not just at the origin. Because working at the origin is easy, but I want to show some of the problems that occur when you're not at the origin. And then I will take this curve and I'll deform it so we can see what's going on. Okay. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to find the coordinates for this point on the curve in the local space for the eye. And I have the local space represented with this locator that's named local space. So in order to find the position on the, the point on the curve in that local space, we're going to bring the locator into the node editor. And then I'm also going to have to bring in the curve as well. So let's just bring in everything. So we have the aim target locator and the local space locator. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a vector product node. And we're going to be multiplying the translate position of this locator by the world inverse matrix of the local space locator. And that's essentially going to work as if we were taking this target locator and making it a child of the local space locator. That's what multiplying by the world inverse matrix essentially does. And what we can actually do is instead of using the translation from the aim target, we're just going to directly take the position from the point on curve info node instead. So we can move this stuff up and out of the way now. So we have the vector product node and we've plugged everything in. And what we want to do is we want to set this to point matrix product. The difference between a vector matrix product and a point matrix product is a vector matrix product would basically take this point, put it into the local space of the locator, and then give us a vector from the center to that point. But a point matrix product would do that same uh, operation, but then it would add the position portion of the local space locator's matrix. So I will show you what that looks like by creating a locator, taking the output and plugging it into here. And it's going to be somewhere kind of random because it should be in the local space for, it should be a child of the local space locator. And you can see that we have found the correct position. Now 
if I were to go back and change this to a vector matrix product, you can see that it is out here because it did not take into account the position of this. It just cared about the vector between the two points. So stick with point matrix product for now. And I'll leave this locator up just so we can see it. So now we have the local y and x coordinate of the point on the curve. And what we need to solve for is the local z coordinate. Because that would be the distance that we'd have to go out from the center, kind of depth wise, to get to this point. But we don't want the coordinate, the z coordinate for the point on the curve. We want the z coordinate for the point on the sphere that has the same local y and x coordinates, which would be the same as projecting this back along the z axis. And I know that's a little bit hard to understand verbally, but hopefully when I show the math that we're going to be doing, it'll make a little more sense. And the math that we're going to use is just the Pythagorean theorem, but in three dimensions instead of two dimensions. So in two dimensions, the Pythagorean theorem would be a squared. So for example, the height plus uh, b squared, for example, the width equals c squared, which would be the length of the hypotenuse squared. But because we're in three dimensions and we have three axes, the y-axis, z-axis, the y-axis, z-axis, and the x-axis, the actual length of this hypotenuse would be x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals the hypotenuse squared. And we need to solve for z. So what we're going to do is first we're going to square x and y because we already know those values. That's the local x and y coordinates that we got from this vector product node. So let's take those, plug them in here. And square them both. And then what we're going to do is we're going to subtract those values from the hypotenuse squared. And the hypotenuse in this case is just the radius of the sphere, which in this case happens to be 1. So let me connect these up. And then disconnect this. I made that connection just so that we would have this extra input open to set to 1. And the operation we need is subtraction. We're subtracting uh, a squared and b squared from the hypotenuse squared. And so the result right here would be our z coordinate, our local z coordinate, squared. So what we want to do is take the square root of it. And I'm going to do it in the Z channel just so I can keep everything organized. And now, well, I don't need a second locator. I'll just use this one. So we have the point on the curve. So now, We plug the x and y from this vector product node and then disconnect this translate z and instead use the z value we just solved for. You can see that we have found ourselves on the surface of the sphere. And let me change this to be visible so you can see that it's actually on the sphere. And as we move, this curve up and down, you can see that locator 
always stays right on that span. Let me increase the fall off here. Now if we move left and right, of course, it moves off of that span, but that's what we would want anyway. So now, instead of plugging into this temporary locator, let's bring the aim target locator out here and plug those values into it. And as soon as I do that, you'll notice that something is broken. This locator is out here because we've plugged in the local coordinates for the point on the sphere, but then we've put the locator in global space. So we could either make it a child of the local space locator, which would be easy enough, and it would snap directly to this point. And then when we do that, you can see that the joint always aims at a point along this span and that's easy enough but if we want to be able to keep this anywhere in the hierarchy what we can do is use a vector product node take this, these local, ooh, gotta grab one at a time, take these local coordinates, plug them in as a vector, and then perform the opposite operation that we did at the beginning. So instead of multiplying by the world inverse matrix, we're gonna multiply by the world matrix And we will take that output and plug it into translate. And of course, we need to set it to point matrix product, just like we did before. So now you can see, even though the aim target is outside of the local space locator hierarchy, it is still located here on the sphere. Now, one last thing that you have to keep in mind is the orientation of this aim constraint. Here you can see that it is aiming along the correct axis directly out to that locator, but the up axis is not really what we would want. If I take this curve and bring it back down to default, we would want this y axis to always be aiming tangent to this span. So in order to do that, all we need to do is go into this aim constraint that's affecting the joint, and we're gonna set the world up type to object rotation up, and the up object we're gonna be using is the local space locator, and then the up axis that we're gonna be using is not the y axis of the local space locator, it's actually going to be the x axis. So let's set the up vector to x and the world up vector to x as well. And now you can see that the y-axis is aiming tangent to the span. And if we were to deform this up and down, you can see that it always remains tangent to the span. So if we were to have an actual mesh for an eyelid here, it would take the vertical span of the eyelid mesh and lift it up vertically and keep it vertical no matter what. So that's the solution to getting around that um, little error that comes in if you use a simple aim constraint. And it is relatively lightweight and you can keep everything inside of the node editor. You don't add any extra transform nodes.